welcome. Welcome to the Heinz College Diploma and Award Ceremony. Can you? It's a good thing to address right away. Um, it's not on, I guess. Is there something here that needs to be turned on? What's that? I got it. Good. I had nothing to do with it, but it came on. That's good. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing about planning. It, um, so welcome. Welcome to the Heinz College Diploma and Award Ceremony. Uh, so that we may all enjoy the ceremony, please turn off all your cell phones and pagers. Thank you. I'd like to now call on Lisa Briggs, one of our graduates of the Master of Entertainment Industry Management Program, to the stage to sing the national anthem. Lisa? Please be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, Lisa, for that sterling rendition. I'm Ramaya Krishnan, Dean of the 8 John Heinz III College, and I'm honored to preside over this important occasion as we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. This ceremony marks a milestone for the college, as it's the first time graduates from our two schools, the School of Information Systems and Management and the School of Public Policy and Management, share one commencement ceremony. This shared ceremony reflects the collaborative culture of the college. Today we will be awarding the following degrees. The Master of Information Systems Management, the Master of Science in Information Security Policy and Management, the Master of Science in Information Technology, the Master of Arts Management, the Master of Entertainment Industry Management, the Master of Science in Biotechnology and Management, Master of Science in Healthcare Policy and Management, the Master of Medical Management, the Master of Public Management, the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management, and Doctor of Philosophy. Our graduates have worked very hard to reach this significant day. Please join me in a well-deserved round of applause for our graduates' outstanding accomplishments. <clears throat> These talented individuals did not reach this point in their lives alone. They were supported psychologically, 
emotionally, and often financially by family and friends, many of whom are here today to celebrate with them. I'd like to ask the graduates to join me in welcoming and thanking their family and friends here today. Also joining us are outstanding faculty and administrators who have been instrumental in forging these programs and ensuring the success of today's graduates. Will the faculty and staff in the audience please rise so that we may recognize you? I'd like to introduce those seated on the stage with me today. Starting first, my left, Craig Barrett, retired CEO and chairman of Intel Corporation, who will give today's keynote address. <laughs> Professor Al Bloomstein. Faculty Chair of our Masters of Public Management programs. Will Gore, on my right. <laughs> Faculty Chair of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management program and Professor of Public Policy and Information Systems. Andrew Wasser, Associate Dean of the School of Information Systems and Management. And Brenda Peiser, Associate Dean the School of Public Policy and Management, and also Acting Director of the Master of Public Management Program. It's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Craig Barrett. Dr. Barrett's career has spanned academia and the technology industry. He worked for 35 years at Intel Corporation, becoming Intel's fourth president in 1997, CEO in 1998, and chairman of the board in 2005, a position he held until stepping down in 2009. Dr. Barrett is a vocal spokesman for the value technology can provide in raising social and economic standards globally. He's a leading advocate for improving education in the US and around the world. His passions are evidenced in the myriad of nonprofit boards and organizations that he serves on in such areas as technology, education, health, science, and innovation. Dr. Barrett has also served on numerous policy and government panels and has been an appointee of the President's Advisory Committee for Trade Policy and Negotiations and the American Health Information Community. He chairs the National Education Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, the so-called STEM initiative, now known as the Change the Equation program. He received his Bachelor of Science, Master's of Science, and PhD degrees in Material Science from Stanford University. He went on to join the faculty of Stanford and serve as an associate professor in the Department of Material Science and Engineering. I think it's safe to say that he has a strong allegiance to the Stanford Cardinal and White. However, he'll find room for a little tartan plaid, since tomorrow he'll be receiving an honorary Doctor of Science and Technology degree from Carnegie Mellon. We are also very excited to welcome Dr. Barrett's wife, Ambassador Barbara Barrett, <clears throat> to campus to share this joyous, joyous occasion with us. Dr. Barrett, we are honored to have you join with us today, and we appreciate you joining us between engagements on such a busy weekend. It's my pleasure to introduce a true leader in the technology industry and a passionate advocate for education access, Dr. Barrett. Thank you for that kind introduction. Let me first offer my congratulations to the class of 2011. Uh, your hard work and perseverance has paid off, and you're about to embark on the next phase of your career. With the world in its current uncertain state, you're bound to find some excitement, some opportunity, and probably also a little bit of chaos. But regardless of the external environment, I think your time spent here at Carnegie Mellon will serve you well going forward. I'd also like to congratulate the parents, the friends, and the relatives of the class of 2011. Many of you can now stop making down payments on your children's future. 
For this graduating class, I want to offer a bit of advice as you go forward. For the past several years, you've been studying at the feet of learned professors. You've followed their guidance and studied subjects. You've written exams. You've written papers on esoteric topics. You've studied and passed those myriad of exams to get you to this point in your career. Along the way, you've heard the words of wisdom from your advisors, from the faculty members, from the administrators, and others. And today, I also would like to give you a few words of wisdom. But the words of advice I'm going to give you are not going to come from the great books of the world. Rather, they're going to come from the ultimate source of wisdom, the source that we all consult routinely, a source that I consulted routinely during my 35 years at Intel and even before that, a source that I have never found to be wrong. That source, ladies and gentlemen, is the Chinese fortune cookie. <laughs> and the examples I use today come from real fortune cookies that I've collected. I eat a lot of Chinese food uh, over the past two decades. And I believe that they're very appropriate for this occasion today. And I realize that this approach may be a bit unconventional for a commencement address, but I do believe you'll have an easier time remembering these words of wisdom than you can remembering the answers to the last exam you took. And that's my purpose, really, in standing in front of you, is to give you some words of wisdom that you can carry forward with you into your professional career, and something that you can recall far easier than the second law of thermodynamics or the words of Peter Drucker. Let's get started. The first fortune cookie comes from my famous favorite Chinese restaurant in Silicon Valley, Chef Chu. And this fortune is very appropriate for today because it states very simply that the world will always accept talent with open arms. Translated, that means education is really the key that opens the doors of the future. With a good education, you have a chance to move forward to the next level. You can get into graduate school. You can get the job of your dreams. You can pursue research that will help humanity. Start a new business. And if you're really successful, you can pay back your college loans. <laughs> but a good education is just a start. It gives you the opportunity to move forward, to continue to move forward. You need to commit yourself to continual learning as you go through your professional career. In fact, I think you've just started the difficult part of your learning experience and just passed the easy part, the university part. The toughest part of learning will be in the marketplace, the professional marketplace in front of you. It's not enough just to have an education. You also need to have passion for what you do. And that is what really talent is defined as, a good education and then immense passion for the job at hand. If you have that combination, then I think you'll do well as you go forward. Whether you want to be a poet or an engineer or a physicist, a physician, an entrepreneur, or a CEO, the world is ready to accept your talent with open arms. And it starts with a good education. In today's world, we hear a lot of discussion about jobs which are safe, jobs which might be exported, competition between countries for different jobs. I think actually that discussion is way overblown. I think today's world, if you have talent and passion, regardless of your profession, the world will accept you with open arms and you can be successful. That's what's really key. Choose a profession that you're excited about, that you have a good background in, and then display immense passion. The second fortune cookie comes from the Golden Phoenix Restaurant, my hometown of Phoenix, Arizona. It's on 16th Street, if you're ever there. This fortune has to do with the concept of competition. Competition at the individual level, at the corporate level, and even at the national level. It states very simply that you cannot win unless you choose to compete. In today's world, we all know that there's increased competition. 
and that no entity can rest on its laurels. Just because you were number one yesterday doesn't guarantee you success in the future. The individual worker in the marketplace knows that. Corporations know that. But interestingly, there are some entities like state and national governments who have yet to discover this. For example, take our country that we're in today, the United States, a country that has the highest gross national product, any country in the world, one of the highest standards of living, any of the countries in the world, a place where innovation and investment in the second half of the 20th century reaped great rewards in terms of the growth of the economy and opportunity for its citizens. It greatly grew our national wealth. But today our country is struggling with this concept of competition. How do we compete with the rest of the industrialized world? How do we compete with India and China? How do we create the smart people and the smart ideas that are necessary for success in the 21st century? We're currently struggling with these issues, but in my belief we're hampered by the concept that we have been number one for so long, we've almost grown to expect it as a given fact, that we will continue to be number one. We don't really have to do anything new and different to compete. And I think nothing could really be farther from the truth. If you want to win, you must choose to compete. And that means you do the things necessary to compete. You cannot just hope that things will get better. You have to choose to compete. You all know the state of K-12 education in the United States. Puts us in the bottom quartile of the OECD countries. We've gone from the nation which had the highest percent of its adults with a college degree to roughly 13th in the world in that category in the past 20 to 30 years. You know that our investments in research and development have been roughly stagnant for the last several decades. We've gone to a position where we invest roughly half of our gross national product, half of what we used to invest 20 or 30 years ago, at a time when other countries are dramatically increasing their investment in R&D. Soon as a country, we're going to have to decide to compete if we want to be successful, just as you graduates must decide to compete if you want to be successful. My final fortune cookie is a message about individual initiative. You know, sometimes in life we depend on other people to solve our problems. And certainly there is no shortage of major problems in the world today. And equivalently, there is no shortage of major government initiatives to solve this, these problems. This last fortune cookie comes from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, and it states very simply the concept of self-initiative in the following way. It says, a small deed done is better than a great deed planned. And if you think about that for a minute, it seems obvious. Small deeds are done by individuals. A teacher helping a child, a doctor dedicating their time to help someone who's ill, a struggling entrepreneur receiving a microloan in a developing country, a recent graduate volunteering for Teach for America duty to help children in poor environments in the United States. All of these are small deeds done. All of these help people. The contrast is the global program, the great deed plan. You can think of these very easily. The United Nations solving world hunger, eradicating illiteracy. The United States has its share of great deeds planned, solving the Social Security Trust Fund issue, and solving the medical, rising medical costs that threaten to bankrupt our country. All of these are great deeds planned, and probably all of them will amount to very, very little. Their lofty goals hardly ever achieve anything. You don't have to look far to see an increasing dependence on governments and great deeds planned as you look around you. 
And rather than focusing on these great deeds planned, I think we as individuals should be focused on small deeds done, those that the individual can accomplish. President Kennedy stated this fortune slightly differently many years ago when he asked, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. He was suggesting small deeds done are the way forward, not massive government programs. I think it's important for all of you as you go forward in your professional careers to focus on details, results, accomplishments, and always recognize that that individual initiative, that individual effort will carry much more importance than the great deeds planned. Let me end by wishing you once again success in your career. There are two things that once gained can never be taken away from you. They are your education and your personal integrity. Cherish these two qualities as you move forward in your professional career. They will serve you well. Congratulations again, class of 2011. Thank you, Dr. Barrett. Several of the themes that you mentioned in your talk are sort of at the heart of what it is we try to do here at the Heinz College. The founding vision of um, Dr. Bill Cooper, who founded uh, the School of Urban and Public Affairs, which has now become Heinz College, is to create men and women of intelligent action who can change the world. And your point about initiative is very resonant with that thought. So thank you again. <clears throat> It's now time to honor the accomplishments of some very special members of the Heinz College community. The first award is the Barbara Jenkins Service Award, which is presented to, the, to a graduating student who has demonstrated service to the Heinz College and has made significant contributions to the quality of life in the Pittsburgh community. I'd like to ask Brett Viviora to please join me on stage. Let me tell you a little bit about Brett. Brett is not only bright and motivated, he's been active and a committed participant in the Heinz and Pittsburgh communities while enrolled in the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management program. In 2009, he started onlyinpittsburgh.com, an online neighborhood information resource designed to bridge the gap between residents and local businesses while showcasing all that is uniquely Pittsburgh. It helps give local businesses a competitive edge by allowing them to spread the word about their offerings and allow people to easily see what's going on around town. It also helps boost the local economy and make Pittsburgh's local character more accessible to visitors and newcomers. On campus, Brett has been active at the Heinz College Institute of Social Innovation, CMU's startup incubator, Project Olympus, and the Keith Block Entrepreneurial Competition. Brett has received both the David Lindgren Fellowship and the Kaufman Fellowship for his work with Only in Pittsburgh. After graduation, Brett will be able to focus on growing his venture with support of the Ann Lewis Social Incubation Fellowship that he most recently won. We're confident with Brett's entrepreneurial spirit and commitment to the region, he'll continue to make a positive impact on Pittsburgh businesses and residents alike. Brett, congratulations. In addition to that um, nice looking plaque, there's a little check in there too. That should make Brett happy. So. Uh, it's now my pleasure to present the uh, Student Leadership Award. This award recognizes a student who has demonstrated leadership and initiative, excellent academic achievement, strong communication skills, and exceptional promise for future success. This year's recipient 
is Rocco Pesella. Will Rocco please come up on stage? <laughs> Rocco is a leader both at Heinz and in Pittsburgh. Within Heinz College, Rocco has served as a student representative for his program, bringing issues and ideas to the college's administration. He has created avenues for connecting the MPM students, the Masters of Public Management students, to one another through newsletters and events, and has served as a mentor to students interested in politics. In community, Rocco serves as a Democrat, Democratic committeeman and a judge of the elections, which are both elected positions. He worked in marketing before Heinz College and now interns for a Pennsylvania state senator to learn more about the legislative and political workings of our state. And that's not enough. Apparently, he plays a mean trumpet, too. So, Rocco, congratulations. This leadership is Next, I'd like to present the Otto A. Davis Award. The recipient of this award is selected by a committee of faculty, staff, and students, and is given to an individual who exemplifies the college's commitment to social and racial justice. I'd like to ask Rashal Brackney to please join me on stage. <laughs> Shal is a graduate of our Master of Public Management program. Her dedication to social and racial equity is evident not only in the work she does on the Pittsburgh Police Force, but also in the volunteer work that she does to train other police forces on how to both fairly and firmly improve their communities. Outside of her responsibilities of protecting and serving the public, she also leads an educational course for teenagers at her local church. One nominator wrote, Rashal's life is dedicated to, in to increasing racial and social justice, and she does that by making Pittsburgh a safe, community-oriented place. It's evident that Rashal is most deserving of this award for her continued efforts, both personally and professionally. Rashal, congratulations. I'd like to now invite our uh, student speaker uh, to present his reflections on life at Heinz. Each year, a student speaker is chosen to give their perspective, experience, and vision. This year, the graduating student selected Jose Fresh, who graduates today from the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management. Jose? <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished faculty, administrators, students, families, and friends. We gather today to celebrate the end of an era of long study nights, group meetings, and free pizza. <laughs> At the same time, we celebrate the coming of a new era in our lives, one that will bring more responsibilities and hopefully personal fulfillment. In the company of family and friends, we gather to celebrate the completion of our graduate degrees. Indeed, today is a pivotal day for us as intellectuals and human beings. Today we conclude a prolonged but fulfilling journey in the pursuit of an education that has stimulated our intellect and allowed us to grow. For the majority of us, this journey began and concluded in the basement of Hamburg Hall also known as the bunker or the dungeon. <laughs> Most of us spent many nights and days in the hallways of Hamburg, wrestling with our academic responsibilities. Our efforts have finally come to fruition in the form of a squared cardboard with our name on it. In receiving this diploma, we must recognize that we will now enter an elite group in the world. 
We are now among the few privileged persons that hold a master's or a PhD. As we proudly receive our degrees, we must pose challenge to ourselves to become a force for the greater good of humanity. As we know, knowledge is power. As we also know, power comes with responsibility. Soon we will be in positions of power that should compel us to undertake prominent roles to help humanity at the local or global level, regardless of our field of work. We are living at a time in which we have reached new heights in science and technology. These advances have facilitated our locomotion, communications, and financial practices. In the midst of these technological revolutions, we are also facing social revolutions, triggered by inequities that demean the human condition. In the past months, we have seen what can happen in countries where societies advance technologically, but fail to develop as cohesive societies with authentic equal opportunity for all. What occurred in Tunisia and Egypt and has permeated other Middle Eastern and North African countries has a great potential of occurring in many other countries around the world, including developed countries. At the heart of these uprisings lie past decisions that have promoted inequality and injustice and are now backfiring. Current generations are bearing the burdens of mistakes conceived by their predecessors. In many countries, mistakes committed by previous generations have forced current generations to live in famine, poverty, insecurity, conflict, censorship, and dictatorship. These conditions are all antithetical to the human condition and to the human desire to live in peace and with dignity. Even in the United States, we see how past interventionist policies are forcing the youth of today to sacrifice their precious lives to ensure the security of the nation. We also see how past financial decisions are forcing current and future generations to live in debt. My friends, what will we do as Heinz College graduates? Will we put to good use the skills that we have gained at Heinz? Will we make wise decisions that benefit future generations? Will we pass a brighter and fuller torch to our children and grandchildren? My fellow graduates, answer these questions individually in the silence of your consciousness as you work in the fields of the arts, information systems, and public policy. Go out there and be a catalyst of change. Seize the moment and be successful, but define success in your own way. Do not seek fame and fortune only to be respected and admired by others, for you will be disappointed. Rather, define success and be successful for yourself. My friends, we are not in this world only to satisfy the expectations of others and ourselves. We are in this world to satisfy our expectations and help others. Tomorrow, many of us will hold many distinct titles that will flatter us. We must stay grounded and remain humble. To paraphrase the words of Niccolo Machiavelli, the renowned Italian political philosopher, remember that it is not titles that honor men and women but men and women that honor titles. Let us honor the Heinz College titles we are receiving today. Congratulations, Heinz College graduates of 2011. It's now time to present our graduates with their diplomas. Some students are recognized as graduating with distinction, others with highest distinction. Will Program Director Sean Beggs please step forward to read the names for Master of Information Systems Management and Master of Science in Information Security Policy and Management graduates. Associate Dean Andrew Wasser 
will assist with the presentation. Sean? Will the first row of the Master of Information Systems Management graduates please rise and come forward. Divya Athresh. Geraldo Alvarez Fernandez. Miguel Alvarez Chavaria, distinction. Anthony Jared Andrezik. Nisha Bala Subramanian. Carlos Barcello, highest distinction. Nitin Betagari, distinction. Mansi Lokesh Bhagwat, highest distinction. Arvind Barhadwach, highest distinction. Distinction. Aruna Pat. Kartik Bhatia, highest distinction. Aniket Bhat, highest distinction. Hebatun Nasar bin Manwar, highest distinction. Leah Bisnam, distinction. Jin Chung, highest distinction. Aya Joka. Pratik Chawla. Lulu Chen. Tian Shi Chen, highest distinction. Jin Muk Choi, highest distinction. Kunal Chopra, distinction. C. N. Joe. Aaron James Couch, highest distinction. Himanshu Dahia. Sayatan Das. Rituparna Day, highest distinction. Jing Jing Du. Zhu Ping Du, highest distinction. Sandeep Francis Arrow. Himalatha Ilango. Matthew David Falzon. Thomas Dearman Flavin, highest distinction. Raymond Peter Fung. Shilpi Gurr, distinction. Taylor Francis Geis, highest distinction. Eleni Jergusi, distinction. Ankit Goal. Advitya Gauri Shankar, highest distinction. Nirupama Devi Govatel. Jivaka Govo. Nintin Grewal. Natalia Grejak. Anuj Gupta, highest distinction. Lin E. Hua, distinction. 
Jin Feng Shi, highest distinction. Shang Kai Huang. Hui Huang, highest distinction. Min Cheng Huang. Vladimir Ivanov. Sunil Joseph. Nicholas Kakeglos. Kiran Karbajan. Gurnimith Carr. Kavita Sunil Kadie, highest distinction. Sudong Kim, distinction. Anket Kotari. <laughs> Harris Kriestoresh. Ranjani Kumar. Kumar Kunal, distinction. Rocky Kurin. Su Chun Lai, highest distinction. Hannah Yong. Brian Lewis. David Lewis. J.U. Lee. J. Lu. Ng Lu. Stephen Lo. Xiao Yan Ma. Sidesh Mahadik. Ermi Majitya, highest distinction. <laughs> Jignesh Lalit Kumar Mehta, distinction. Shrija Melu, Melu Tavel. Jonathan Robert Muller. Haran Murphy. Narasuman Nagarajan. Nidhu Nalin, distinction. Sneha Narahali. Jesus Navarro. Yao Wei Ning. Tarjini Oza. Rahul Pandey, distinction. Kumaresh Pandian, distinction. Pai Pong. Puneet Parak. Satish Pasala. Nikita Patel. Van Lao Pekka. Madhur Falak, highest distinction. Neeraj Prasad. Sharat Prasad, highest distinction. Preeti Parandara, highest distinction. Ashwin Chandra Putta. Alun Chin. Tian Chu, highest distinction. Subham Raj. Shitej Rajiv. Shivkant Ranade, highest distinction. Ajinkya Deepak Ratnaparki. 
Ashwin Kumar, Sharat Sanabarate, Thejas Varia, Raul Sharma, Swati Singh, Madhavan Srinivasan, Distinction. Prasanna Srinivasan, highest distinction. Troy Douglas Stevens, highest distinction. Vinod Sundar, highest distinction. Anup Sunke. Ira Tiwari. Puneet Tiwari. Jose Pedro Udungraga, distinction. Aniket Vadya, highest distinction. Satyaninen Venkatanraman. Kevin Alexander Walton. Jing Wong. Ng Wong, distinction. Matthew Wong, distinction. John Wong, highest distinction. Leon Shi, distinction. Yu Yu. Zhao Sheng, highest distinction. Zhen Yan Ju, highest distinction. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Masters of Information Systems Management Program. Graduates, you may now be seated. With the first row of the Master of Science in Information Security Policy and Management graduates, please rise and come forward. Anthony Kojo Agbali. <laughs> Chen Young Choi, distinction. Mona Gerg. Highest distinction. Matthew Robert Hoey, distinction. Feng Lin. Napat Ratasiran Tara Root. Ryan William Schrader, highest distinction. Michael Joseph Scotto. Jamie Christine Tupino, distinction. <laughs> Diana Wajaja. <laughs> Melissa Zuck. <laughs> Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Masters of Science in Information Security Policy and Management Program. Graduates, you may now be seated. I now ask Program Director Alison Frankowski to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Master of Science in Information Technology Program. Alison? Will the first row of graduates of the Master of Science in Information Technology program please rise and come forward. Nathan Ryan Ballantyne, highest distinction. Ensign Eric Kwaku Watang, U.S. Navy. 
Keiko Buckley, Distinction. Joseph J. Cardillo, Highest Distinction. Elizabeth Ann Collicott, Highest Distinction. Kevin Ryan Coulter. <laughs> Megan Dunn Crespi. <laughs> Gengs Doko. <laughs> Kelly Renee Dowdy. <laughs> David Devinder Gill, Highest Distinction. Alexander Maxwell Gordon, Highest Distinction. Randall Jackboni, Highest Distinction. Derek Johnson. Sanjay Kumar Karki, Distinction. Garrett Richard King. George A. Korsnick. <laughs> Timothy Ronald Marconi, Distinction. Amber Lynn McConaughey, Distinction. Jyoti Menon. <laughs> Scott Morgan, Highest Distinction. Krista Patrice Murphy, Highest Distinction. James David Ryle. <laughs> Timothy Simmons. Holly Marie Straka, Highest Distinction. Ravi Rajnikant. Tripathi Distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Andrew West, U.S. Army Reserves. <laughs> Christian F. Wink, Highest Distinction. And William Scott Zikafus, Distinction. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Master of Science and Information Technology. You may now be seated. Caroline Warner Jones Alexander Distinction. <laughs> Catherine E. Blumen, Highest Distinction. <laughs> Ching Bu, Highest Distinction. <laughs> Cha U Chang, Highest Distinction. Jin Mo Cho. <laughs> L. Corwin Christie. <laughs> Samantha Decker. <laughs> Shannon Lee Deep, Distinction. <laughs> Alexander C. De Claudio. Megan Du Bois, Orvaki Halme, Zong Han, Ranya Marie Holmes Distinction, Un Young Kwan. Maureen E. Logan Distinction. <laughs> Ning Lu Highest Distinction. <laughs> Yan Chen Lu. <Lu>. Rachel Marin. <laughs> Stephanie McGillan. <laughs> Amelia Louise Northrup Distinction. Emily Parkinson, Highest Distinction. 
C. Cha. Bianca L. Ruthven. Emily Stewart, highest distinction. Crystal Wallace, highest distinction. Emily Barton Wicks. Laura Elizabeth Zorch. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Masters of Arts Management Program. Graduates, you may now be seated. Now I'll ask Program Director Dan Green to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Master of Entertainment Industry Management Program. Dan? Will the graduates of the Master of Entertainment Industry Management Program please rise and come forward. Lisa Judith Briggs, highest distinction. Hong Chen. Kara Elizabeth Sicarelli. Ashley Shoshana Finkel, distinction. Megna Sethi. Andrea Thornton, distinction. Coral Jackson Wright. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Master of Entertainment Industry Management Program. And graduates, you can be seated. I now ask Program Director Jim Jordan to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Master of Science in Biotechnology and Management. Will the first row of the graduates of the Masters in Biotechnology and Management come forward, please? <laughs> Natasha Balakrishna. Rashni Bedi, distinction. Mira George. Pelican. <laughs> Nikhil George Puthatan, highest distinction. Ashwini Jagannath. <laughs> Heer Crane Jian, distinction. Lauren Elliot Khan, highest distinction. Gawav Jagadish Mehta, highest distinction. Gwatam Mehta, highest distinction. Devansh Hemuth Shat. Adam Jeffrey Simone. Weijen Sun. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Master's Degree in Biotechnology Management. The graduates may now be seated. Will Professor and Senior Director of Healthcare Programs, uh, Professor David Dawsey, please join me on stage. Will the graduates of the Master of Science in Healthcare Policy and Management and the Master of Medical Management programs please rise and come forward.
Dorian Adeyemi. Masatoshi Ashiki. Tracy Ling Chu. Emily Louise Tag. Benjamin Lee. Xinju Lee. Pin Chin Lee. Lin. Xin Lu. Distinction. Timothy Lu. Highest distinction. Edward O. Shrilada D. Ramallah. Janelle Cecilia Saunders. Christine Rose Steffa. Anusha Venkatramani. Daniel Zervins. And now, will the name, and now we will call the names of the Master of Medical Management graduates. Dale Bonnie Lynn Griffin. Fernando Jacito Manila. Thomas Aquinas Rakowskis. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Master of Science in Medical Management Program and the Master of Science in Healthcare Policy and Management. Graduates, you can now be seated. I'd like to now ask uh, Professor Al uh, Bloomstein, University Professor of Operations Research and Public Policy, um, faculty chair of our NPM programs, to come forward and read the names of the graduates of the Master of Public Management program. Al. Will the first row of graduates of the Master of Public Management program please rise and come forward? This is intended to change your feeling about the neck. <laughs> Noel G. Batterchur. Karen L. Barlow. Rochelle Marie Brackney. Dana Jean Bukowski. Carla Lenholt Carver. Melissa Rose Farah. <laughs> Catherine R. Fonner. <laughs> Joseph Mark Grant. <laughs> Janice Leah Ho Held. <laughs> Heather N. Johnson. Patrick D. Kelly, highest distinction. Jiang Yon Kim, distinction. Courtney Kissel. Jennifer B. Koser, distinction. Justin David Lang, distinction. Edward John Lewis. Augustine Pablo Medici, distinction. <laughs> Melissa Joanne Osborne. <laughs> Rocco Anthony Pasella, highest distinction. <laughs> Jesse Posset. <laughs> Barbara Alethea Pyros, highest distinction. Ryan Patrick Quinn. Anna N. Roberts, highest distinction. Catherine Dugan, distinction. 
Christina M. Teebs, highest distinction. Catherine Cameron Walter. Chow Wang. Babiso Wright. Felix John Uras, highest distinction. Weiting Zhang. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the MPM program. <laughs> graduates, you may now be seated. Thank you, Al. <clears throat> I now ask Program Director Gladys Perez to come forward and read the names of the graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management program. Gladys? graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management, please rise and come forward. Veronica de Los Angeles Acha Alvarez. Carolina Almarente Terero. Anifalaje. Richard Kessie Anuma. Gabriel Barrera Ortega. Diana, Diana Paula Basto Castro. David Joseph Benitez. Scott Bluen, <laughs> Alyssa Louise Berger, <laughs> Chen Chen Chow, Chen Chow. <laughs> Lorraine Cisternas Garcia, <laughs> Melanie Claxton, Distinction, <laughs> Jacqueline Kahn. Cheney Colson, highest distinction. Alicia Viviana Criado. Yuni Deng. Kenneth Durrell. Sarah Elizabeth Fink. Kendall E. Fowler. Jose Martin French. Anna Kadard Russell. Kang Gu. Yuchion Guo. Stefan Joseph Gottstadt. Highest distinction. Adam Edward Paul. Dashu Han. Kelly Louise Hart. Shu Wei Pu. Catherine Jean Hickey. Jennifer Lee Horwitz. Young Hu, highest distinction. Aishi Huang. Aki Ichima. Kasuyuki Imasato, highest distinction. Jishu Jian. 
Wen Jin Jiang. Paul James Karam. Pavan Kapulu. Leslie Marie Crow, highest distinction. Christopher D. Little, highest distinction. Hang Lu. Hawa Rose McCauley. Andrew Brian Bukurek. James Card McComb. Andrew McIntyre. Travis Benjamin Meekum. Cristina Sonia Melo Lagos. Distinction. Laura L. Miller. Barbara Amaka Wakobia. Carlos Ignacio Patino Flores. Highest. Distinction. Shu Wei Shi. Tyler A. Savage. Lee Robert Scott. Timothy John Seidel. Nicholas Carrick Traverdi. Shrinath Sinha. Caitlin Kyle Stewart. Nikwisha Bianca Tolliver. Victor Vesely, Jean Yolanda Wong, Kerr Wong, highest distinction, Rochin Wong, Sho Yi Wong, Brett William Wiwara, distinction. Star Wilbraham, distinction. Sarah Jane Whitting Galgano, distinction. Jua Wu, highest distinction. Ying Yue Wu. Jue Run, highest distinction. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management Program. Graduates, you may now be seated. I now ask Executive Director of our Washington, D.C. office, Marie Coleman, to come and read the names of the graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management, D.C. track. Marie. <laughs> Will the graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management, D.C. track, please rise and come forward. <clears throat> Justin John Archer. <laughs> Yu Kyung Stephanie Chong. <laughs> Keith Henderson Clayton, highest distinction. <laughs> Evan Wyatt Gross. <laughs> Jared W. Hawes. 
Christopher James Henderson, highest distinction. Sarah Rachel Henning, highest distinction. Adam Lawrence Jones. Christine Joy Kester. Pallavi Kumar. Mary Lamb. Patrick Ju Young Lee. Shambhavi Malini Manglik. Kanan McCaslin. Ashley Claire Noya. David Benjamin Peterson, distinction. Ross Daniel Riquetto. Pamela T. Rodriguez. Please join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management DC track. Graduates, you may now be seated. I'd like to now ask uh, Professor Al Blumstein um, to come here again. He's former dean of the Heinz School, in addition to being the university professor of operations research and urban systems, to join me on stage um, to announce our graduates of, uh, who are going to be receiving the doctoral degrees today. Al? We have five uh, graduates uh, with us today who have earned uh, their doctoral degree. And, and uh, could I ask them to uh, come forward? I'm pleased to present Keith O. Hunter with a doctor of Keith has earned the Doctor of Philosophy in Organizational Behavior and Management. His dissertation is titled, Structural Facilitators of Targeted Tie Formation in Organizational Social Networks. <laughs> Keith is going on to be an assistant professor in the Department of Organization, Leadership, and Communications at the University of San Francisco School of Business and Professional Studies. Congratulations, Keith. I'm now pleased to present Brian B. Knudsen with a Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Management. His dissertation is entitled The Local Ecology of New Movement Organizations. Brian is currently seeking a postdoctoral research position uh, and congratulations to Brian. I'm next pleased to present Anul K Anuj Kumar with a Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems Management. His dissertation is entitled Essays on Technology Enabled Multi-Channel Operations. Anuj is going to be an assistant professor in the Information Systems and Operations Management Department at Warrington College of Business Administration at the University of Florida. Congratulations to Anuj. I'm next pleased to present Kiminori Nakamura with a Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Management. I think it's important to note that Kiminori is also the 2011 recipient of the William W. Cooper Dissertation Award. William W. Cooper having been the first dean of what is now the Heinz College. This great honor 
is awarded annually at Carnegie Mellon University to a doctoral dissertation that deals most effectively with issues and problems in management or management science and has a strong applications orientation with accompanying theoretical or mathematical development. His dissertation is titled, Redemption in the Face of Stale Criminal Records Used as Background Checks. Kiminori is now an assistant professor in the Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice at the University of Maryland, which has been rated the number one uh, program in criminology and criminal justice. Congratulations, <laughs> Kiminori. And finally, I'm pleased to present Yung Feng Shi with a Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Public Policy. His dissertation is entitled Information Technology Adoption and Procedural Performance in Healthcare. Yun Feng is a research scholar at the Center for Healthcare and Policy Research at Penn State University. Congratulations to Yun Feng. And congratulations to all of our doctoral graduates who have had a considerable experience at uh, their studies. <laughs> Should also note that um, Kiminori Nakamura's thesis advisor was Professor Al Bloomstein, so <laughs> Al. <clears throat> I'm now pleased to announce two new awards for Heinz doctoral students to recognize outstanding first and second papers that our doctoral candidates write in advance of their dissertation. These awardees were selected by the PhD committee and have been uh, supported by friends of the Heinz College, uh, Suresh Khanda, who was a PhD alum, and George Duncan, who was on our faculty and is an emeritus faculty of the Heinz College. The first research paper award is named in memory of Suresh Khanda, who earned his MSPPM from Heinz in 1975 and went on to earn his PhD at the Heinz College in 1980. We believe this award is a fitting way to honor Suresh's legacy of impactful research and mentorship and the many lasting contributions he made throughout his life and career. I'm happy to present the inaugural Suresh Khanda First PhD Research Paper Award to Yan Huang for her paper entitled, A Structural Model of Employee Behavioral Dynamics in Enterprise Social Media. Yan? The second research paper award honors Professor Emeritus George Duncan. George joined Carnegie Mellon's faculty in 1974 and spent his career advancing the application of statistics. Many doctoral students benefited from George's tutelage during his time at Heinz. It's fitting that we are now able to present this award to recognize academic excellence in his name. I'm happy to present the inaugural George T. Duncan Second PhD Research Paper Award to Yu Chi Xu for her paper entitled Estimating Black-White Mortality Differences by State of Birth Using Census and Vital Statistics Data, a Simple GMM Approach. Unfortunately, Yu Chi was not able to be here today, but let's give her a round of applause. And now for the, the final awards of the day. First, I'd like to present the Outstanding Teaching Assistant Award. This award allows students to recognize an outstanding TA. This year's recipient is Jose Pedro Unduraga. Jose. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jose is graduating today uh, from the Master of Information Systems Management Program. He's TA for Distributed Systems, a very much loved course, I might say, but also a difficult course <laughs> that involves a great deal of work with developing distributed systems. Students commended him for his patience, depth of knowledge, and dedication, always willing to go the extra mile. He often added extra office hours right before exams, and when homework was due, to help ease the stress and anxiety of students. Made sure students understood the concepts first, and then the code. Jose, after reading through the nominations, it's clear that you helped alleviate a great deal of strife and frustration for many students. Congratulations on behalf of the Heinz College. Next, the Staff Excellence Award. Just presented to a staff member for outstanding service to the college. I'm very happy to recognize Glenn Molzer for this award today. Unfortunately, he's not been able to be here today. Glenn is the facilities manager for the Heinz College. Hamburg Hall, which is described, I think, by our student speaker, Jose, as a dungeon, among other things. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was built in 1915, it's about 100 years old. It belongs, it's, it's in the, the Registry of National Landmarks. Uh, Glenn has his hands full keeping up with all the minor calamities that a historic building like this presents. No matter what he's dealing with, whether it's a pipe bursting or broken windows or rewiring, um, or perhaps most challenging of all, moving the offices of over 80 faculty and staff members in one summer, he does it with a smile. Glenn has done a great job in keeping this building up to date to provide students, staff, and faculty with an environment conducive to productivity. So, Glenn. <laughs> Finally, the Matsya Wade Teaching Award is given to a member of the faculty to recognize outstanding performance in the classroom and commitment to student learning. I'm happy to award this year's teaching award to Professor Will Gore. <laughs> Will has been on the faculty since 1985. He serves as a faculty chair of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management program and is chair of the faculty oversight committee for the Masters of Public Policy and Management program in Washington, DC. Will's research interests include geographic information systems, predictive modeling, and management science models applied to public sector problems. Will teaches web technology, database, geographic information systems, and a project course, and it is his commitment to teaching that's earned him this honor today. He teaches core courses, so there are often quite a few students in each class. The fact that he memorizes every student's name, which is hundreds of students, exemplifies his commitment to teaching and dedication to the students. In addition to his own courses, Will goes above and beyond the call of duty to help students in other courses and systems projects. He often spends hours helping students work through technical issues, even when they're unrelated to his own work or class. His students would agree that he's very knowledgeable and engaging in the classroom, he's always willing to help outside of the classroom. His incredible passion for teaching, and many students noted his unsurpassed commitment to student learning and mentoring. It's evident that he has impacted many a student's life, both in the classroom and beyond. Will, congratulations. <laughs> As this year's teaching award recipient, Following a tradition that's been set, Professor Gore will now present the charge to our graduates. Will. Well, thank you, Dean uh, Krishnan, and thank you, students and colleagues, uh, for bestowing the teaching award uh, upon me. It's, it's a great honor. Um, today, we are the Heinz College with our two schools, many degree programs. For a few minutes though, I wanna take you back to our roots when we began as the School of Urban and Public Affairs, or SUPA. Among SUPA's founders were 
uh, Bill Cooper, the first dean, Toby Davis, who became the second dean, and Al Bloomstein, as you know, uh, was also a dean. He was the uh, fourth dean. Uh, Toby, Al, uh, Bill, and other SUPA founders had a dream, an idea, and a plan. Their dream, idea, and plan are still the right ones for our college. From arts, entertainment industry, healthcare policy and management, to public policy and management, and to information systems and security management for today, for the future, and for this dynamic world. The dream. The dream was to make the world a better place. The idea. The idea was to build a school around problem solving. This has a bit of history uh, behind it. Back in the 1960s, public administration was the only kind of public sector program out there. Its heyday was a period of great stability in this country after World War II and up into the early 1960s. <clears throat> so um, it was based on something called incrementalism. Public administrators, public administrators were only to make small changes, incremental changes, to programs and organizations. They didn't rock the boat. They only kept the boat on its course. But that wasn't working in the tumultuous 1960s, when this country's cities were burning with racial and social unrest. So SUPA and the other policy schools that were forming at the time had a new approach that one of problem solving. It's about making changes, uh, sometimes big changes for the better, and goes back to first principles. Define the problem, define performance measures to evaluate alternative solutions, and so on. SUPA, now Heinz, is famous for pioneering problem solving in its analytical methods. Problem solving rocks the boat and puts the boat on a new and a better course. The plan. The plan had two parts. First was to build a new kind of PhD program whose graduates would create new knowledge and methods for problem solving. The second part was to build a master's program whose graduates would solve problems and make the big changes to make the world a better place. Graduates, you are our hope and contribution to the future. PhD graduates, go create the new knowledge that we will need. Master's graduates, go solve the problems, make the changes to make the world a better place. I bid you Godspeed on your journey. We've now reached the conclusion of our, of our ceremony. It's time to celebrate with the reception in the beautiful foyer outside. Um, our commencement speaker, Dr. Craig Barrett, said there's a lot to learn from Chinese cookies, and uh, fortune cookies, that is. And um, he talked about to win, you must compete, take initiative, and a small deed done is better than a great deed planned. I want to add one more thing to that. Um, to complete the graduation today, you must shake the dean's hand, which you did. And now let me ask you all to join us right outside uh, at the reception. Please remain seated while the graduates leave the hall. But before we leave, let's give the graduates one final round of applause.